Good evening, friends. I'd like to welcome you to What's in Tegan's Storage Locker. It's the show that dares to ask the question, just what is in my storage locker? Uh, so, um, the answer, it, well, it's always going to be comic books. It's it's just always going to be comic books. Um, I tried to get some takers for anything else, because I got, I got games, I got uh, toys... Uh, people just seem to want the comic books, so uh, we'll, we'll go for that for the time being. So uh, we're going to try something a little bit different today instead of me grabbing a random fistful. Um, I found a couple longer comics that would basically uh, take up most of an episode. So let's uh, just devote an episode uh, to reading through, and I didn't read these in advance, just like the, the, the rest of the, uh, the show. Uh, but I, I am familiar. I've read these. Last time I read through the Frank Miller Daredevil, actually, I've only read through the whole thing once. And it was, I think, in my early 30s. I'd read bits and part pieces, the Electra parts. Um, so it's not really fresh in my mind, but I, I have read it before. Um, and I've read certain parts of it more recently than that. Um, so, what we're looking at today here uh, are issues one and two of the Electra magazine uh, from late 96. Now, uh, the, the magazine probably requires a little bit of explanation. In the mid-90s, um, this was a format that, you know, when Marvel was, I think, um, kind of casting around for formats that were, were going to do something on what was left of the newsstand, um, they came up with the magazine, which was a massive square-bound newsprint um, reprint system. They had they launched with a couple of my favorite my favorite all-time publications, uh, the Spider-Man magazine and the Marvel Superheroes magazine, and um, it was just four issues thick. Uh, I think it was $3 an issue, um, and you'd get, like, I think the Spider-Man magazine had two issues of the John Romita Jr., I want to say two issues of the John Romita Jr., Amazing Spider-Man, an issue of Marvel Team-Up? I can't remember. And the last slot was a Ditko um, Lee Spider-Man. And then the Marvel magazine um, started off reprinting the burn fantastic four um i want to say the early see there was an iron man run i want to say it was the er the early john romita jr run on iron man i'm not remembering it had the early frank miller daredevil and uh what was the fourth slot what was the fourth slot I want to say it was the, uh, the John Byrne Hulk as well. Um, because I think the idea was that, uh, you know, had it ran in perpetual, uh, in perpetuity, um, it would have, you know, you would have reached the high, the high water mark of Byrne Fantastic Four, Miller Daredevil, um, Peter David Hulk, uh, in a monthly book, if it had kept on, you know, for a few years. But, it was not to be. They neither of them lasted more than six issues. Uh, it was not an experiment that succeeded. Um, but they they published a few more magazines, not monthly books, but you know just uh, reprint books in this format through the rest of the the decade. And then they they stopped doing magazines. However, uh, the current Marvel Tales format, which I've actually written about for the journal, because I I just I really love reprint formats. It's kind of a, a thing of mine. Um, the current Marvel Tales format, which is also square bound, um, four comics worth, is is very similar. It's kind of the modern um, heir to the, the magazine um, format. Now, Electra Saga specifically is an interesting artifact. It is a uh, artifact from the early 80s. Uh, the um, the early days of deluxe reprints. 
uh, before the trade paperback really started to take off. Because it wasn't until like the late 80s, the very late 80s, that um, companies got more serious about putting out older books in trade paperback. And it wasn't anything, anything at all like it is now. But they started to sort of, you know, put some of their bigger stories and bigger runs out uh, in hardcover or hardcover or softcover. And, you know, there was, uh, there was some, you know, new uh, bookstore movement on them as well. So it was, uh, by the late 80s, that system was sort of struggling to be born. But in the early 80s, before trade paperbacks really took off, um, the reprint format to beat was, uh, they were usually called special editions. You'd have a 48-page comic book published on really nice paper, reprinted with new colors. Uh, if you actually look on this account, you'll find a series of uh, reviews from the TikTok account that I did with the X-Men special editions from the early 80s, which was um, the Neil Adams, Roy Thomas run, recolored with actually very nice, interesting um, new watercolors uh, for the nicer printing. And the stories are edited together, which is something that nowadays, I think, justifiably, the modern audience kind of shrinks from because it means, you know, cutting out other parts of the stories, adding interstitial art so that it flows better, not something that we necessarily put premium on in our reprint packages. However, that's in the early 80s when they didn't really have a solid feel for what, um, what worked and what didn't work for reprint packages. That was, that was in vogue for a few years, and they gave a number of series uh, that treatment. And one of them that they did was Electra Saga, which was not Miller's Daredevil in its entirety. It was every part of the story, every part of Miller's Daredevil that involved Electra, um, edited together into one long story. So all the other parts, um, all the other plot lines, all the other characters, but the stuff that pertained directly to Electra. And it was originally published in a four-issue series that actually had new covers from Miller, and they were printed uh, later in here. So we'll, we'll see them. And like I say, it's an interesting artifact, and it was also interesting to see them published uh, as late, republished as late as um, the late 90s. Uh, when, you know, there were a lot more uh, of what we call the trade paperback format. Uh, but someone at the company decided that uh, there would be an audience in reprinting, you know, this old kind of archaic, but also at the same time, um, you can't necessarily dismiss it out of hand because this is how, this is um, a format that a lot of people experience this story in for the first time. Uh, and it's an interesting effect, especially w if you've read this and then you go back and read the actual run of books. And it reads more or less like a monthly comic book with, you know, all sorts of plot lines and other characters. And then someone who has no bearing on the story will show up for a fist fight, you know, uh, for 10 pages. You know, just a regular Marvel comic. This was an attempt to craft that material into something, you know, more like what we would call like a graphic novel. Um, separate from the monthly comic book structure. So, you know, the Electra Saga, part one, Frank Miller and Klaus Janssen. Doesn't get much better than that. Uh, this material was edited by Denny O'Neill originally, so, I mean, that's three legends right off the bat. Um, reprint editor Joe Andriani. Uh... And they didn't have a lot of ads either. Now, this was uh, $3.95. I did not buy these off the newsstand. I bought these out, out of, I think, a dollar box years later. One problem with this magazine format is that it was really easy for the printing to screw up. And you can see on this copy here, and this is probably why I found it in the dollar bin, the spine is pinched really tight. 
and the cover is just, you know, kind of wasted, uh, wrinkled because of that. The, the interior isn't affected really at all, but because of the way the spine is printed, um, a lot of times you end up with that um, like warping on it, I guess. All right, so we start off, and I don't remember any of the issues that... Um, I don't remember how the, the stories fit into their individual issues because it's been a while, like I say, since I, I sat down and read the run the whole way through. So we just start off um, in an early flashback. It begins on a sunny September, September afternoon. It begins with a 19-year-old boy who has not yet found a use for his strange powers. So this is the very first meeting between Matt Murdock, who's always accompanied by Foggy Nelson, and Electra Nachios, who is being, um, I guess, that's her bodyguard, um, walking around the, the campus with her dad. And man, you know, especially, you know, this, this period Miller, the early Miller that is my favorite Miller, the Miller that I go back to, the early Marvel stuff, you can just see he was taking so much from Ditko. He drew the Ditko hands. Um, and there's Slick Matt with a rose. But if you are an enemy of my beloved father, be warned, I am well trained in martial arts. Whatever you try, I will be ready. So, you know, he's charming. He's taking the initiative to charm the pants off of this woman. Uh, literally here, because, um, yeah. you know, this is Matt Murdock. He's kind of a Lothario. That's, that's his character. He's a ladies' man. See, and it's kind of hard for the cover to stay flat because of that. Um, anyway, she's, she's a sucker, I guess, for gingers. So they meet that evening, and the next, very soon, they fall in love. And it is a first love for both. It's a nice colored panel there. Interesting effect. And for a year, they are euphoric. Uh, and later on, um, when he did the uh, Man Without Fear series, I think with it's called with John Romita Jr., which I have in a box, actually, two feet to my right, um, he would fill in some of this, and you'd get to see more of... Um, him walking around with uh, just like normal clothes and this red bandana to cover up his eyes. He's, uh, oh, there's a, cause there's a hostage situation on in an administration building. Oh, so it's like activists, like, get bent pig, we want a car and a plane out of town. So I guess someone saw Dog Day Afternoon. And Matt Murdock, he's never done anything like this before, but he's infiltrating the uh, the administration building. He's choking that guy out. Um, he he is just jumping in there, despite never having really uh, done anything like this before. But he knows that Electra has enough training that if he comes in and busts things up and frees her. Um, uh oh, except there's, there's a guy falling through a window backwards. They're killing the hostages. And then um, he gets shot. Oh, okay. So Electra's father actually gets shot by the police in this hostage. He's the hostage, and then he gets shot by the cops. So there you go. It's too late. His heart had stopped. No, Papa. So, that's, that's a nice page. Again, I have no idea whether or not this is how it was actually pr first printed or whether or not it was... See, because that's the type of stuff they did. They would just cut out these um, flashbacks and, you know, if there's other stuff from, uh, you know, whatever was happening in that issue, it's... Oh, and they're cutting. The, see, they're intercutting because I think this is much later. Oh man, this is. I mean, you know, this. There's a reason why these comics have the reputation they do. 
but 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 you also see how it's kind of a, a jumble. They 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 sort of um, put it together um, to read as a uh, extended narrative when you know it wasn't wasn't necessarily intended. Uh, um, so it, it's an interesting effect, man. But you just get these isolated sequences just on their own. They're gorgeous. You know that's Miller at his best. He knew how to make a really striking looking comic book page. Still does for that matter. Um, so she's climbing up to the, the ninjas. Uh, do you know who we are, Toots? What we are? No, but I want to be one of you. I like the minimal brush lines here. Uh, very kind of, you know, just chunking it down on the page. She has to shave her head because she's just going to be doing martial arts 24-7. She, yeah, she's learning from stick. You got to leave, Electra. Just leave. You don't belong with us. But I've given you all. I'm as skilled as any of you. You ain't clean. You're full of pain and hate. All you've learned is how to use the pain. There's no use, no place for you here. So go. Oh, that's, that's nasty. Her wounds are just too deep. Whatever happened to her down there, she can't shake it. We are a war stick. If we lose her, we never had her, not for a second. Like, well, they're just gonna, she's gonna go over to the hand. And it's like, yeah, well, she was probably gonna go to the hand anyway. So she's got another sensei she's going back to. Feel no shame. Stick's order is severe. I myself was cast out. Years ago, I myself was found unworthy. But still, I live to teach what little I know. You must find your own way. Yeah, Stick's kind of a jerk. Does anyone read these stories come away thinking, you know, Stick, he's, he's a stand-up guy. He's someone who I want to sit down and have a beer with. <laughs> I like this pink. I, I like this wild pink they're using for the background here. I cannot understand why. Why you failed? It was your father, Elector. You loved him too dearly, and he held you too closely. I mean, you know, uh, her, her name is Electra. Uh, it's not that complex. Uh, that's a nice exchange. You know, talking heads are just, they're a problem. This, uh, breaking up that kind of a, a static presentation on the page. You know, it has to be done. Sometimes you just need to have characters sitting there talking to each other. How do you break it up? How do you make it interesting? Well, let's just play around with this reflected light. And it's a simple effect. Um, but just seeing how these reflected uh, grids um, contour to their faces. Very, very interesting simple, almost a basic effect that he gets so much mileage out of. And then this bottom silent panel. It's interesting. He's using, uh, I said earlier that you can see a lot of Ditko in his stuff. And you can definitely see uh, these sequences are where where he gets to trot out some of, you know, the, the Ditko Doctor Strange. He almost did a run on Doctor Strange. There's some promo pieces that exist, very nice looking promo pieces. And he would probably have drawn a very handsome uh, Ditko influenced uh, Doctor Strange. Um, let's see. Pity Electra, though. Though she is courageous, she is young and innocent in the ways of evil men. Um, would one of you please hand me my clothes? <laughs> um, so this is the hand, I guess. I guess she's being recruited by the hand. The rumor is true. You trained with stick? I did, but his way is soft, slow, and hardly profitable. So you come to the hand. 
We require a test. Oh, down in the hole. Oh, man. So she just jumps right on down to fight a couple guys, to fight a dude with size. Um, oh, wow. Okay. That's, that's rough. So they send her down to fight a guy um, and have her kill him, but then it turns out that it's her sensei. And it was dark. They, they threw the lights off so that he, she'd do that in the darkness before she'd realize what she'd done. Uh, he was difficult to catch, yes, but once drugged, he served his purpose. Welcome to the hand. She does not scream. She thinks only of a cliff she will never climb and a peace she will never know. I like, you know, that he knows when to let the colorist do some of the, the, the carrying here. Although, where is the... Do we not get a credit for the colorist? I'm not seeing a credit for the colorist. Oh, well. Ugh. Well, I'll have to look it up. I'll have to look it up and flash it on the screen for you. Um, I don't know. So they're, they're ninjas, and they're on a ninja, tr uh, ninja mission. And it's the early, oh man, it's the early 80s, so you know that, and this, maybe even, I, I don't remember if this was 80, 81, 82, somewhere around there, 80, probably like 81. Ninjas are just coming into their own. And this turn, this was such an influential run of comics, because it was from here that basically the, I don't want to say like the whole decade's obsession with the ninja, but certainly if you look at it, Frank Miller, he was sort of patient zero in terms of putting ninjas in all his stories. And from then it was a hop, skip, and a jump to the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And, you know, uh, not long after he did these comics, he did the Wolverine series with Chris Claremont, where Wolverine's in Japan fighting ninjas. Um, ninjas were big, and of course... This was around the time when Larry Hama started to, you know, make waves with G.I. Joe, and who is the most popular G.I. Joe now and forever? Uh, Snake Eyes. So, oh, there's a fight on the plane here. Quick action. You mothers won't get me. So he shoots, but not before he can get thwacked in the stomach by a, a sigh. It's those ninja, they... Oh, look at that panel. Look at those reds and that purple. Do not lie. Your hesitation was not due to inexperience. It was concern. You do not want to kill. Tell me, Jenin, how did one so weak become one of the hand? My story would mean nothing to you, Electra, but I've heard that you are as trapped in this order as I. That is how the hand works, isn't it? But my corruption is not yet complete, and perhaps neither is yours. Perhaps this is our chance. Yeah, but she is damned, and she is just going for it, embracing her damnation. That's the crux of the character. She's angry. She makes a mistake. I'm just following that anger to the dark side. Dun, dun, dun. Uh, so, she just, uh, she has betrayed our order. She's proud, that one proud, but we will find her in time. I will see her die. They will not find her, not for years. She flees Japan. And I, oh, I guess that's these little um, uh, narration boxes. Um, so we're cutting to a different part of the story. Or at least, see, it's all been cut chronologically. Uh, so we're cutting to a very early appearance in Daredevil when she's just crawling around killing some guys. Oh, man. You definitely see some Paul Gulacy in here. 
Um, look at how much of this is being told in silhouette. You know, he was working with silhouette from the very beginning. Uh, you know, this countdown, it's simple. It's almost a cheap um, trick. But, you know, just put a countdown in and show them while people are doing their action. Uh, she is killing people and then she blows up a ship. Oh, look at this nice, tiny little ship and then huge explosion lines. Almost a John Byrne trick right there. All those people. Uh, so she blew up the, the ship. She's floating. We are hours, days from the nearest land. Only by combined effort can we cross the, cross the distance. It would be stupid of you to kill me. I guess I'll wait till we're closer to shore. UM-6, CIA, a mercenary. That was my ship you just sank. You haven't stopped me. I will yet complete my holy mission. Von Eisenbluth will yet suffer and die. Murdering a spice merchant? Well, ultimately, she doesn't really care what she's doing is the thing. Ooh, just... See, you reach this point where you just every little panel is nicer than most people's double-page spreads. I mean, look at this. Look at how... As soon as they're inside of the island, they try to kill each other. So we see this very basic picture of her in shadow, just throwing the, the, the knife she's got. And we just see the handle of the knife leaving the panel. Oh my goodness, this is so much economy. And it works so well, but it's not good enough because she gets winged by the guy's gun. And then you see oh, this wonderful fading into different gradations of green as it gets darker and darker. But she's not dead. She's swimming. Oh, she's breathing. She's coming around. You okay, lady? She she gets found by a couple uh, muscle dudes on the beach. And then she steals their dune buggy. <laughs> That's not nice. That's not nice of her. Uh, she's just going around. She kills a dog. Good job, Electra. Couldn't you just carry around a piece of steak? Uh, you thought that sinking my ship would stop me. You thought you were safe. All the demons of hell couldn't keep me from you. I will hear you scream, and then it turns out someone beat her, beat her to it. So she arrives in time to kill the other assassin. Uh, no, he kills the, the old man. The target kills the assassin. Um, oh, man. <laughs> this guy deserves to die. Please forgive an old man's indulgence, Electra. He was yours to kill, but my pleasures are few these days. It has been such a long time since I have shot a Jew. Oh, so he's a Nazi remnant. And so she is... Very happy to stab him in the heart. That is just a nice sequence there. Whew. They blow it up to get those dots. Time is occupied. The missions are many, the money good. But still she is a tortured soul. The killings one after another do not ease her pain. The profits do not make her richer. Then comes the day when she follows a bounty to New York City and everything changes. And there's our boy meeting back up with Matt Murdock. And this is uh, their first encounter. She's heard tales of this adventurer, this daredevil. It is unfortunate that their paths have crossed. Unfortunate for him. But she, does, but she doesn't stab him. She thwacks him with the, the butt of the, the sigh. She closes in to remove him quickly. And for a moment, her heart stops. There's something about him. Something about his jaw, his mouth. Briefly, a memory comes hot and fresh and hurtful. She lashes out. And she goes back to kill the dude, to try to kill the dude she's going to kill. You are going to help me capture him, or I am going to kill you. It is as simple as that. 
He knows who she is immediately. It doesn't take him very long to figure it out. Ooh, that's a nice page. Haven't thought of her for years. Don't know how I survived it. Never heard from her again, never in all the years that followed. So suddenly, Daredevil's world was turned upside down because the woman he loved has appeared again. All right, so he's, uh, he's realizing that his lady love is back in town and he's got to hunt her down because she's become a cold-blooded mercenary. She's hunting this guy. Details I don't think are particularly that uh, important. Uh, Daredevil's running down leads. Um, Mickey, not one of, I don't know if that's one of his recurring stoolies. Uh, I ain't afraid of you, devil. You got you got a rep. Everybody knows you ain't never killed nobody. <laughs> then he drops the guy. He catches him. He's like, yeah, I can do this all night. <laughs> Ooh, that's not, that's such a simple effect. Such a simple effect. Straight out of Gene Cole one right there. And yet it looks so nice, so very nice. Uh, take her, but she's just abroad, Mr. Slaughter. You are the boss, let's do it. Okay, but it sure is screwy. Yeah, well, <laughs> she's about to, she takes the whole pillar, the pillar, the whole uh, pier down. Um, oh, she's hit with a dart. That knocks her out. She, you got to knock her out with a dart. That's how strong she is. Like an angry bird of prey, the seaplane that was to take Alarich Wallenquist to freedom instead charges the aged pier. So there's an explosion. Daredevil pops in. He's, sa he's saving the people from the explosion. But Electra as being held by some German schmuck. Uh, and But he trusts that Electra can still take his lead. All he has to do is distract this guy with his club, and she takes uh, the rest of it. Oh, Matt, it is you. Echoing beneath the West City Highway, approaching police sirens wail, hopelessly late. A distant foghorn gives out a great long moan. For the first time, Electra cries. And that's the first, the first volume of the Electra saga right there, leading up to her first uh, encounter with Matt Murdock as Daredevil. And this is one of the, I think that was one of the original illustrations Frank Miller illustrations. Yes, yeah, so they got him to do new um, drawings for the cover. You know, he was uh, involved in in this version of the story. I don't know if he edited it edited it himself because this uh, maybe the original Electra Saga printing uh, tells us, but um, this bare bones edition does not give us any of the process on that. I'll have to look it up. So Electra's just wandering around doing stuff. There's this guy on a bicycle gets shot in the neck by a dude with a crossbow. Um, she was after that bounty, and now she's going to get the guy who uh, deprived her of her bounty, who's a ninja, looks like one of the hand dudes. Uh-oh, but she's, she's hunting these guys, and she overhears them saying that they've put out... A um, a mark on Matt Murdock there. Oh man, look at these colors! Look at these colors. This is gorgeous. They are enemies now. She hates him. She does, and she will not imperil her own life to save his. She will not. And yet she finds herself on the next flight to New York. So he finds himself surrounded by ninjas. Ten hours ago, we were playing set down at New York's LaGuardia. Ten seconds ago, this man thought he was safe in his brownstone. Uh, people are always coming to get mad in his, uh, in his brownstone. You will learn nothing, Murdoch, when one of the hand has fallen. He is no more. 
And this is the first time, I guess, that we would have seen their their big gimmick, which is once you defeat them, they just they dissolve completely, and apparently they smell really bad too. Um, he must have been waiting for me with that crossbow, but someone got to him first. What's going on here? Who put a contract out on me, and who came to my aid? That's a nice... See, this is where the image generation got this habit of doing these super skinny horizontal establishing shots. This specific shot of, you know, the side of a building like that. You can see it in so many, like, uh, like Fell, Larson, McFarlane. You know, they all had these comics on lockdown. Everyone did. Everyone read this. Everyone read these comics. That's why you go back and read them. And even if you're not a Frank Miller fan, you got to go back and see what everyone else spent a decade stealing from. And it's really quite blatant, too. I mean, they just straight up wholesale ripped sections out of this book for all sorts of stuff. Um, and, you know, from Ronan, um, it's certainly Dark Knight Returns. Uh, that's a nice, nice, uh, colors here. You this the black with the red highlights just really pops. Bit of a problem though when you're using green with red, you know, it ends up looking like Christmas. I like that nice dark green. You don't see that very often. Uh, mad. So he ends up even with his even with his senses, he ends up significantly um, uh, beat up by the explosion. Uh, can't dodge it. So who is uh, what what who is his girlfriend at this point? I don't even remember. Heather, Heather. Okay. Yeah, Heather. She. Bad things happened to Heather. Bad things have happened to pretty much every single woman uh, Matt Murdock has ever slept with, including Electra. Um, the only woman who didn't suffer for the um, acquaintance was the Black Widow, because she's smarter than he is. <laughs> um, so, oh, she's taking care of these garbage men. Oh, she wants... Oh, that's what she's doing. She's uh, um, recruiting Melvin Potter, who is one of Daredevil's... He starts off as an enemy, but eventually he sort of becomes an ally. Um, he's the, this gladiator fellow. Not the gladiator from the, the X-Men, but this... He's basically got, his gimmick is that he's got saw blades on his arms. So, you know, he knows his way around to fight, but he's not like a trained ninja or anything. Um, and basically, this was a terrible mistake because they're in a fight and he's basically lost his groove. He's, he's retired, so he's not much help. Oh, but here's, here's our boy. Here comes Daredevil. Ooh, that is a nice panel with all these boxes. Wow. Just, you know, the thing with Miller, once you figure out, um, well, for me, the, the secret to, to sort of figuring him out was understanding two things. Uh, how well he uses the, the parts of the picture plane, you know, the the foreground, middle ground, background, how well he utilizes that. And he utilizes it in just about everything he does. But more specifically, he figured out, I think at a very young age, how to draw a perspective grid, which is very basic, you know, art school stuff that some people go out of their way to ever avoid doing it. And yet he, his use of perspective is so dynamic and once he figured that out, once you see it in everything he does, it, it makes so much of what he does pop. And it's not that difficult to trick. 
And you see him pull off really, really advanced compositions just by knowing how to draw a perspective grid on the page. Um, yeah, so they're fighting ninjas, and the ninjas are running away because they can't do much with Daredevil there, although Melvin really didn't do a lot. Ninjas shenanigans. Uh, you're not paid to think only to kill or be killed. Oh, so ninjas are fighting other ninjas. I don't remember what's going on with any of this ninja politics. But these ninjas, this guy... Ooh, that's a nice effect. See, because you don't see the killing stroke, but you certainly know what happened. And you just see them all fall. I like this this coloring, how the, 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 her photo is blue, and the, the, the flames, the yellow and red flames highlighted on there. Just every decision made. The, every decision made in the production of this comic, pretty much. Um, at a certain point, it just hums. Like I said, I don't even like Frank Miller. And these are gorgeous comic books. I don't necessarily think of Frank Miller as being a pinup guy. He learned how to draw women's faces by reading too much Steve Ditko, I think. But, you know... A lot of people really responded to Electra. That's certainly true. Uh, no matter whatever has happened, no matter how many years have passed, you saved my life. You risked it all for me. <laughs> and she throws him out of the building. She hates me. Yeah, well, she honestly isn't that fond of you. And basically, you know, he he's hanging out with... Um, Electra and Heather left him, and uh, I don't know, man. There's there's a saying about one in the hand is worth two in the bush, but um, I don't know. Uh, so they're after Foggy. That's that's a nice um, setup there. He's just sitting on the flagpole with the bow and arrow, and then Matt comes up behind him and twangs the arrow. It just reads so well. It just reads so well. And then they take a tumble and the tumble and the cab goes off. Such excellent use of these um, long horizontal panels. And the action is so clear. You see him, he, he throws the billy club. He trips up the guy. Guy falls flat. Um, daredevil searches him and finds this uh, business card. What do they think I am? An amateur? This is the lamest excuse for a red herring I've ever touched. I just hope Electra isn't thunk. We don't get a thunk, but you can, you can hear the thunk in your brain. <laughs> At some point, you know, he, he's really going to need to get checked for traumatic brain injury. He keeps getting hit on the head here. Um, the ninja you just dissolve down do not dissolve. He cannot be one of the hand. Someone else is at work here, perhaps aiding me. I suggest you find a flat rock to hide beneath Daredevil. Without your radar, you are useless. Oh, did he lose his radar? I'm, I'm not... That was maybe that was mentioned at some point. And... Here she is. I like her undercover. That's good undercover. Just, you know, put on a, um, not even a full duster. Um, there's some ninjas hiding and she gets them. It is she. Electra has found us. Ugh, thunk. There's a thunk. She has lost the advantage of surprise, but she doesn't seem to have any trouble. There's some samurai guys. She knocks them all down. And, you know, here's a very... Um, if you uh, know that Wolverine series um, and that Paul, the Paul Smith run on Wolverine that came out just before, um, there's some uh, stuff in the Paul Smith run that you can definitely see. He's uh, pulling from this, pulling out a bit, um, but definitely learning from this. And certainly by the time, you know, Miller comes back and does the, the Wolverine series, 
um, he's got this type of setup, you know, down. Uh, oh, I just love these colors, though. She's got to fight the big ninja who killed the little ninjas earlier. Um, climbing the stairs to get to the guy. And she, she sinks two knives into this man's chest, and he does not fall. So this guy's a rough, rough customer. Um, she actually, so she brings him down with her um, sash, gets his legs, but it brings him for a tumble. But then she, he's still not down. Um, even though there's some, he falls on some, some caltrops and they don't seem to hurt him. But she gets him with the, he gets a, her with the whip. Her weapons were only bait, and now she is his. Uh, Daredevil's having trouble here because these ninjas are, they get his billy club, and I think I've said before, it's a very, very poor weapon to bring into a, a sword fight. It is the rope that is her enemy now. It binds her, chokes her, draws her closer to its awful fang. So she's about to get it. She's trying to reach for the sword that's in the pole. And she gets it just in time to stab the dude. Again. And he gets up again. Man, God, or demon, I will send you to hell. Still he lives, and somehow he breaks free. She follows, but he is gone. So basically, just like the Jason Voorhees ninja dude, she can't take him down, and, she, and he disappears. And... She is doing better than he is. And that That's one thing you, you do appreciate about the story is she's basically fighting rings around him for the, the whole um, the whole length of it, right right until the very end when she um, falls to bullseye. I mean, you know, spoiler. <laughs> um, it's on the, it's like the most famous panel. <laughs> that's a nice tableau there and you can tell this was this a last issue page or a first issue blurb or not last page with the, the next issue down here or the first issue with the indicia on the bottom here um good dude's walking around with a sword in his chest he cannot die he must not until the death of his master has been avenged until the woman electra who struck down his Jonan and skewered Kirigi and his own Shiratachi has paid for her crimes. See, she is just a very uh, irreverent person who's, who's going to get hers. You can't say she doesn't earn her death is the thing. As bad as, you know, as sad as it is, uh, she's a very bad person. You can't say that, you know, she doesn't deserve uh, all these people coming down on her like a ton of bricks. And that's, you know, that's the problem is he has to, you know, of course he's moaning and uh, suffering because his great, you know, lost love is, is a sociopathic killer. <laughs> um, poor Heather. Oh, the bomb that hit me a few days ago robbed me of my radar sense. It's gone. My hypersenses just aren't enough by themselves. Without my radar, I'm helpless. I've got to get it back. Yeah, I forgot that he lost his radar for this. Uh, so, oh yes, yeah, so this is when he, I guess, has to hunt down Stick to help him. If I can find him, there's a chance. And I guess story-wise... Trying to think back and remember, this would have been when we were introduced to Stick because the earlier parts with um, Electra and Stick came later in the run, I want to say. And uh, Heather, poor Heather, she's just, he's not the only man in the world, he's the only man for me. <sighs> uh, you know, at, at a certain point, you'd think people need to do People should probably just come in and do, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Interventions. Anytime someone starts dating Matt, 
just come in and be like, no, if if you if you date this man, like the best thing that could happen to you is is just to straight up be killed. Otherwise, you're going to end up like Mr. Fear is going to make you insane or something. <laughs> Bad things happen to people who date Matt Murdock. Um, is that Turk? Uh, she's looking for stick. Oh, so I guess this is Heather. I guess the Heather went and decided she was going to go, yeah, I got to help him. That's not going to get very far with the, the hand, Heather. Not with this little pistol. <laughs> That's a nice, very colon-esque daredevil right there. He's running down his sources, and she's coming behind him and killing all these people. Just indiscriminately murdering people. Uh, Pike. Oh, there's a nice-looking fella. Uh, wonder what she wants with Stick. Didn't think nobody was interested in that piece of sludge. Um... Oh, and Daredevil's still one step behind her. And here's Stick. Uh, winning some money playing pool, looks like. Although it looks like he's about to get his butt kicked for being a pool shark. Uh, I got pool sharks in my family. That's how my mom used to get breakfast. Oof. Nice. Again, with these, these horizontal panels laying out the, uh, the action, you know. He's got this constant uh, rightward motion here until the, fifth pan the fourth panel down when suddenly he's facing right again and she's facing left. So, it, you know, two characters are sort of facing each other there through the panels. Ooh, look at that. Look at that. Guy takes a swing. She parries it. He fires off some throwing stars. He kicks him with a... She kicks him with a, a box. Silhouette panel. Nice looking silhouette panel. <laughs> and that's what you got to do when, when the, the invincible ninja comes for you. You run him over with a truck. You run him over into the water with an exploding truck. And he still doesn't die. That's, that's a problem. That's, that's definitely a problem. Although I, I just love these. He rises up with these pinks and yellows. Gets him with the truck. Know, we're almost done with this one. I wasn't sure whether to be we make it through one or both, but I think we're just going to do the one for today and come back for another week on the second one. And there she goes. Finally, she guts him. God or demon, Kirigi had a neck that was human enough. But what of Electra? How long can she survive in the same world with Daredevil? He has witnessed her crimes against his laws, and he will not rest until she has been punished. Will she be strong enough when the time comes? Will she be able to kill the only man she has ever loved? She shudders, touched by something colder than the wind. And that's interesting because she's not standing like completely straight. She's got her center of gravity forward slightly. It's interesting. Such every Every composition decision he makes at this point in his career is just absolutely fascinating. On sale next week, the conclusion of the Electra Saga. I don't know if the... Um, not a lot of ads, but there's an ad for the first uh, monthly Deadpool. It's Sliders with Jerry O'Connell. Fridays on Fox. Did anyone ever set out to watch Sliders. I ended up watching a lot of Sliders, and I don't think I ever actually liked the show. That's just how the world worked back then. All right, so that's part one of the Electra Saga. Um, 
I don't know if this material has ever been published again in this format. It's an interesting format. Um, oddly enough, I, I think it works like this. Uh, I think Miller's work was strong enough at the time, and uh, um, his work with the, this character was focused enough that um, it doesn't seem weird. It doesn't read out of place. Um, if you know the original books, you can sort of see, like, like I say, they're not fresh in my mind, but I can look back and see, okay, this was cut up here, this was sewn together, kind of like Frankenstein's monster, but for all of that, it actually does read very smoothly. Um, so next, next time I do one of these, we'll look at the second. They have these nice new co covers by, uh, Claudio Castellini, he was a, um, a name at Marvel in the mid-90s. He did that Silver Surfer book that took like four or five years to make. I put a video of that one up on the TikTok like half a year ago. Um, nice pieces. I Just everything he did was, was very good, but I um, didn't end up doing too much more Marvel. He did a Wolverine series in the next decade after this. He's European, so, you know, he could probably make more money <laughs> drawing comics in his home. Uh, for his home country, or at least his home continent. Um, so anyway, um, yeah, check out the rest of the channel. Um, I got lots of videos up. I just put up my 25th video. So there's there's tons, tons of videos to keep you warm on, on those cold winter nights. Um, new videos posted every day on TikTok. Um... And they're also posted on Instagram, uh, new comic book reviews. I review just about just about everything, although, you know, I, I stick close to Mar you know, Marvel and DC stuff for the most part because that's what the people show up for. Um, but, you know, I branch out. I do lots of different things. Uh, I got a podcast with Claire Napier where we talk about Top Cow Comics. It's called Utter Madness. We're on Patreon. We're on Spotify. We're on YouTube. I put up old videos with video annotation, although it takes me forever to get around to doing it. They look pretty nice. People seem to like them when I do them. Um, check out my stuff every week or so. I put up something new on the, the Comics Journal for the most part. We're just coming out of the holidays when you know no one was putting up anything, but... Um, during the normal uh, run of things, um, I post there weekly. What else? If you like my videos, if you want me to do more of them, you need to check out my Patreon. You need to subscribe. Um, send the message that you want to see more of me so that I can devote more of my time to doing stuff like making fun videos. Um, so you all have a fun day. Take care of yourself. Uh, be kind to yourself, be kind to others, be kind to animals and small children. Um, be well, and I'll catch you later.